Hey kids, welcome back to Let's Play SimCity 4 in the increasingly grungy city of Plantation Bay. Uh, last episode, uh, last couple episodes anyway, we expanded uh, across this to this landmass here. And we have this ferry link going on. We've also kind of generally expanded the town. We've been trying to clean up the water a bit, although I think this is going to be a losing battle if we keep up this dirty industry. Uh, and so I think we're going to continue to expand on, on, this, uh, on this city tile. Uh, maybe we'll build some more ferry links. Uh, I don't really want to get going with bridges quite yet, but uh, I'm kind of trying to limit our transportation op options at the beginning and sort of stick with this theme of building a kind of late 19th, early 20th century city. So first off, uh, let's take a look at our demands. Uh, we have a lot of demand, more demand for industry basically, not enough workplaces. So I think that the place we're now gonna start really, really um, uh, sort of chewing up some of this agricultural lands, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I don't really wanna build too, much, too close up here. I'm gonna kinda keep this an industrial waterfront, I think. And so let's just kind of extend this grid very quickly. Uh, on a side note, uh, you'll notice I'm doing a lot of I'm doing a lot of this zoning uh, in these episodes on screen. I think at a certain point as the city gets bigger, I will start to do some of this off screen. So I may t I may kind of like zone large areas of the city, and then uh, and then sort of show you what I've done, and then press play so that uh, you know you don't have to watch every little detail of of, uh, of the city growing. But uh, but yeah, so. For now, I'm going to show you guys just to kind of get a feel, and uh, and later on, uh, later on we'll uh, we'll keep um, we'll keep some of that off screen uh, so that it uh, so that we can kind of progress a little bit faster and stuff. I just kind of want to show how exponential the growth of, of these early industrial cities can be. We need another main road here, yeah, it's sort of like maybe like this, and let's build some bus stops right away. I should learn the hotkey for bus stop, that would be useful. And build one there, that's fine for now, and then maybe one here. And we'll do something like this and this, just to kind of cover as much area as possible. Alright, uh, that should be good. You know what, I'm going to kind, I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and build a ferry dock here, just kind of preemptively, so that... So that where's the ferry dock? Here it is. Um, so that if we decide to expand onto other other um, other land masses, we can uh, we can sort of keep um, we can we can provide connectivity to the most jobs possible. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, let's just sort of do this, and I, we need a bus stop at the ferry dock. So that people can kind of hop on the ferry, hop straight off. Okay, and all we need now is water. That should be good. A little there, just make sure I'm not missing any any tiles. There we go. Uh, let's just sort of take a look at the news ticker too. Yeah, we can see here we're starting to get some more demands from citizens, so air quality is not great. Citizens tire of vigilante justice. Hmm. Well, maybe we can give them a small police station. Uh, let's take a look at the crime map view. Data view, crime. Hmm, yeah, it looks like uh, maybe we'll sort of build one here-ish. Just off the market, this market square thing that we did. Sure, I'm happy with that. Again, I'm not trying to provide service. I'm not trying to provide uh, a complete, uh, complete array of services. But uh, you know, okay. So we're in the red again. So once this industrial area builds, how are we in for power? Always good to check, especially when you zone a big, dense industrial zone like that. All right, looks like we're getting some manufacturing, getting some nice big factories. Love those big boxy factories. And have we eaten up all that demand? Yeah, pretty much. 
something is wrong with this farm up here. I'll probably just delete delete it later. Awesome. So uh, we've uh, chewed up all of our demand for industry. We've picked up some demand for commercial zones. Let's take a look at traffic. I like to build these commercial zones along uh, along routes that are uh, high traffic. So we've this this route is definitely definitely high traffic. That one too. Um, and looks like I think this could be a good. We use that sort of higher capacity road, and I'm just going to dezone like this, and build another. I like these skinny rows of medium density commercial. All right, we'll fill out this area later. Just sort of leaving some farms there, even though they're. All right, so that's used up some of that. Um, we still have some more demand for, for commercial areas, so let's fix this. So that's the kind of thing I'll probably do off screen at some point. But like I said, to uh, give folks a sense of um, of my play style and, and sort of the strategies I use and stuff, I'm, I'm going to do it on screen for now. All right. We can see that some of this zone here, some of this... Uh, some of this uh, residential zone was underdeveloped, I think, and it's kind of it's kind of built up now as well, so that's good. This is going to drive me nuts. I am going to get rid of this because it's just so unsightly. That's because that zone has no access to a road, by the way. And you get those little those little cars with a slash through them. That's what that means. All right. Um, what's next? We need more commercial zones, for sure. Take a look at uh, maybe I'll build a. Um, I know what I'll do. I'm gonna extend this this main street here, and that way some of these residents can also get over to that employment area. There we are. Mustn't forget to put bus stops along these routes. Uh, there's one there. Let's go there. And there. That way that one can kind of serve both of those. Just sort of every 10 tiles or so. There we go. And that's used up our uh, that's used up our commercial demand. So we have some residential demand. And I like the idea of um, building, uh, building these little towns, these sort of little satellite towns uh, on these um, other land masses. We've got some money. Our income's looking good. So I'm going to build a bit more and then I'm going to look at some of the issues that are coming up as we... Uh, anything major here? Yeah, okay. I'm going to look at some of those uh, red warnings in the um, in the, um, the news ticker. I'm going to build one here too. Um, and just the idea here is just to kind of get some more residential stuff going on, give them a few services. Let's try a different approach here. Do that. Build these kind of two coastal roads. And then a little little bit of a different approach to the old uh, grid here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. I think that's good. I often do that. This is sort of what I do often to circumvent the problems that uh, you have with uh, with diagonal diagonal streets. So I, I put the main roads as the diagonal roads, and then I put these kind of residential streets as uh, as not diagonal. Uh, I find that that kind of helps. We need at least one, if not two, kind of smaller streets here. I'd say. There. Let's give them bus stops. Every time you build a zone, it's just uh, you know, put your bus stops, put your uh, put your uh, you know any schools or services you want to offer. Let's put one in the middle here. Um, I know, I know, we we haven't really been building a lot of parks. Uh, that's another thing we got to keep in mind. I think I'm going to kind of build a little bit more than we actually need here of residential. 
and kind of let that develop and and see what uh, what kind of commercial demand that does. We're, we're at 34,000 population. I, I feel like at the beginning of the last video we were around maybe a little under 20,000, so we are kind of doubling our population every episode, and that's kind of cool. Uh, I think the industrial city is sort of, uh, you know, it's kind of a period of uh, almost exponential, exponential growth, and that's kind of what I'm going for here, um, all while keeping a kind of similar mode of transportation. So we're mostly you know, I think historically these would have been tramways, not buses. There, there is a tramway mod. Uh, there, there actually the the network add-on mod includes some some uh, tramway puzzle pieces that you can use to to build a tramway network. I I gotta be honest, uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I find it very very um, very uh, difficult to use, very time-consuming to use. Uh, I'm I'm sure that there are I'm sure that there are people maybe who've posted videos or at the very least kind of city journals on forums and stuff that that kind of go into depth on how to use it and uh, I'll, I'll show it to you at some point I don't want to do it right now but I'll show it to you at uh, at some point and uh, maybe maybe I'll in one of our other cities or something I'll try and do uh, a, a, a tramway build of sorts but I just find it's 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 not not it's not my favorite tool to use let's just put it at that um, probably my weakness, you know, my, my lack of patience for for uh, fiddling around with little puzzle pieces and stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're not going to do that for now. But so you can kind of imagine that this would be some kind of tramway system, uh, or uh, you know, something like that. Um, but it's basically a kind of pedestrian focused. Oh, I should do the buses first, actually, shouldn't I? Um, it's sort of a pedestrian focused city where we're walking short distances and using boats and boats and and kind of transit options to to get around the region uh, if you look uh, if you look historically at uh, most cities that were built on rivers uh, often early on um, any travel across the river was uh, was by boat before any bridges were built and uh, and then you know gradually, especially especially wide rivers, uh, you know that's why the Brooklyn Bridge was so important because it was really the first first major high capacity bridge that that allowed you to travel between uh, between Brooklyn and and Manhattan. And uh, and so one of the other interesting things that you'll notice in a lot of city, cities historically that are built uh, built along rivers is that there's usually one side of the river that has a bigger city than the other. Uh, and that's even true in like London and Paris, uh, like the you know the especially in London, I think the north bank of the Thames has is sort of more developed than the than the south bank. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. If there's someone from London watching this video, by all means, post like a long-winded comment where you call me out for my my inaccuracies. But if I my sense is that is that the 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 south the south bank of the Thames is is uh, sort of built up a little bit later, and or is it very least smaller? There's usually one side of the river where where the main thrust of economic development happens, and that's kind of that, that's really what I'm, that's the gist of what I'm getting at. Uh, let's do this, and is that connected properly? Yeah. Okay. And then like this, like this, like this. Right, we've got a water network there. Do we have a water network here? We do. Yep. And I just want to put some schools and stuff. Let's do, do, let's put one there. Are we still using the minimum radius? Mm. I'll keep it keep it like that for now. Probably have some run into problems down the line, but we will fix that as we get there. Another clinic. Does do we have that over here? Yeah, we do. And let's put one. Let's build the school first. We'll be using larger, larger schools that kind of serve a wider area later. But for the time being, we're building all these little sort of satellite towns. I think that's everything. Oh, we need power. Power here and power there. And let's build a power line here. We could also build a separate power plant to power these different areas, but it's a little bit inconvenient to manage, to be perfectly honest. Uh, all right, so we've built 
probably far more residential than we need. I'm going to zoom out a bit and hopefully this will all develop evenly. Sometimes when you build two different zones at once it uh, kind of causes problems. No, oh, there we go. Looks looks good to me. Looks like everything's kind of building up as planned. We've used up all of our oops, we've used up most of our demand anyway, but you know, we had some we had some un, undeveloped zones here. So yeah, this has popped back up again. You'll notice that we've gone from a demand of um, of manufacturing industry back to the dirty industry, and that's because these these new neighborhoods kind of have a new population, and they're not educated yet. Remember, I said in one episode, I don't know whether it was last one or the one before, but education takes a while to kind of settle in. So we're gonna have a hard time escaping from this, the kind of demand for cheap, dirty industries for the for the foreseeable future until we until we get a little bit more systematic. Yeah. Okay. So we're starting to see some no job zots pop pop. And I have a feeling this might be just a bit too far from where the jobs are for people to actually make use of them. Uh, Alright, so it looks like we've looks like we've kind of used up all of our capacity for industry uh, and residential. Maybe to kind of solve the maybe I'll make this this sort of town here. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit more independent from our main city. Uh, and I'll put some commercial in it. Just along these uh, these main strips here, so it's a little bit underdeveloped too. So maybe we can kind of focus some some commercial air, a uh, small commercial area along this main street here. And that that will also that will give you know the, some of these people are going to be taking that ferry. Oh, maybe this is the, the culprit. Um, some of these people will be taking that ferry, uh, and some of them will be uh, some of them will be, uh, you know, just going to work locally. Okay. Oh, we are running out of water. If you ever see no water or no power, it's it, it's kind of a good, you know, you should pause the game and you should you should solve that problem because because uh, stuff will start to be abandoned very very quickly. Um, let's just uh, I'm gonna keep this kind of going here. Uh, that should be good. That should solve that problem. Okay. So. I'm gonna do the same over here. I'm gonna uh, fill out uh, fill out a commercial zone of sorts. As much as I don't like diagonal kind of diagonal development, maybe I'll just do it along this these roads here. Some more demand. We're also getting some high tech demands, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna hold off on any high tech development for now, but looks like this industrial zone is pretty much filled up nicely. All right, so we have expanded the city a fair amount. We've got these. Uh, we've got these kind of scattered bergs along the coasts. Let's take a little bit of look. Uh, let's take a look at uh, traffic and stuff, and see how people are moving around the city. Road traffic. So road traffic shows you cars and buses. We can then kind of subdivide it. Pedestrian traffic. Lots of pedestrian traffic. Car. Bus. Probably we could probably be a little bit denser in our bus network to try and encourage some folks to take the bus for sure. And ferry. You can see some of these routes are pretty well used. These are a little bit glitchy. These lines you see on the map, they, they kind of cha change color a lot, especially if you go between morning and evening commute. It's a little bit 
A little bit hard to tell exactly what's going on there. That looks like a pretty busy route. Um, we can also click on the actual ferry dock, like we did. Uh, we did that a couple episodes. 1436. 4056. So that's a very busy one. And uh, 1177. So, so these ones are probably a little bit less developed, mostly because they have um, they have their own kind of commercial district. Tempted to put a little bit over here, to be honest. Um, what we might be able to do. Oh, we don't have any more residential demand. You know what? We'll do that next time. That's fine. Um, and there's one other thing that I want to do, and it's a pretty big, big uh, change, and it's going to really affect the development of the city. So first of all, let's address this problem. Prisoners grant themselves early parole. We have a police station, but we do not have a jail. So um, that is going to oh, we got a house of worship too. That is going to like our police force isn't really effective until we have a jail. Now, city jail, you can see monthly cost 450. Uh, there's a way you can fix that, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, city jail is very much uh, the city jail is very much like this kind of stuff. We don't want it to we don't want it to be kind of close to our population. Uh, so we'll put the jail in a kind of isolated spot. Um, just trying to look for a cool spot to put a jail here on this map. Um, maybe we'll put it here. It could be kind of cool. We'll have a jail kind of like on this point. Obviously it's close to the industrial zone, but but that doesn't matter so much. So yeah, and then can't do it here, but if you go into the budget view here and you go to public safety departments, Department of Corrections is your jails and it has its own slider and we can just put that right down because we probably do not have, basically the more police stations you have, the more arrests you make and the more people go to jail. So we don't need to actually pay 450 per month for a jail. You see here, number of cells 400, number of inmates 34. And I think if we increase this to the maximum, it'll be like in the thousands. There'll be like thousands of cells. So we can just use that. We can lower the um, the budget of the jail to only have the number of cells that we actually need. So that's good. Uh, the next thing I want to do, um, and this is something I haven't really quite discussed here. Yeah, prison population back under control. Uh, this thing here, no ship, no trip, no business blip. Uh, so plantation bay goods have, have to move for the wheels of industry to roll and our wheels have some flats connections are key so basically in remember I talked about um, demand for different types of development in the city and there's various factors that influence demand and one of the factors for industry in particular is for another in, in order for industry to grow past a certain point it needs to have connections to off of this map so we can do that in a number of ways. We can create a road connection to neighboring areas. This is sort of you're sort of exporting your industrial goods. So we could create a road connection to to uh, other other tiles, uh, or we can uh, we can actually use a port. Now um, this is probably the first time in this series that I'm going to use something that is not vanilla. Uh, this is this is a good warning. Do we have enough money to do this? Yeah. Um, this is this is a good warning. Uh, don't don't use the vanilla seaports. If you're gonna if you're gonna play with the vanilla and you're not gonna use, uh, you're not gonna download a seaport mod. Don't use them uh, unless you're using them purely cosmetically and your city's already pretty large. Uh, these seaports don't properly. They don't work properly. They uh, they they take um, demand for industry is generated by freight trips. So we don't have any freight. Trips, I guess. Yeah, no, we don't have any freight trips. So the freight, freight trips actually have to leave the map to to increase demand for industry. So if if uh, if you build those ports, uh, the it gobbles up all of the freights, but it doesn't actually doesn't actually create any more demand. Um, so don't use them. Uh, that's that's this seaport here, the the, the generic. Um, the generic Maxis seaport. Uh, just you know, it's unfortunate, but unless you're gonna, I've installed um, 
the descriptions in the I've, I've installed the functional I think it's called BSC functional C ports uh, it's actually it takes a it's very complicated to install um, uh, if you have the time if you've got a couple hours to spend kind of installing all the dependencies and stuff go for it but uh, yeah it's it's I highly advise it it's it's uh, it's one of the most useful ones uh, these port these C ports also upgrade as the city gets bigger they they kind of grow naturally start supporting upgrades automatically small C port what does that look like that could be good we could start with a small C port and maybe expand it later Hopefully it will look okay. I'm going to place it here, and if I need to fiddle around with it extensively, I'll maybe we'll do it off screen. Yeah. I think... Yeah, it's got a kind of a seawall built into it, too. Looks good to me. Now, some of these seaports actually have functional rail and road connections. This one does not, looks like, but that's okay. It's not really necessary. Maybe I'll just delete this road. Move that bus stop. So yeah, we're kind of redeveloping the waterfront and putting a seaport in. Which I think is really cool. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, one of the essential components of a, of a sort of uh, growing industrial city is, you know, they either, there's either got to become some kind of rail connection or, or a, a seaport. And because all this industry is is kind of in the middle of the map, uh, I think that uh, a seaport's a great option. So it's probably going to grow too. What's our capacity? Uh, max capacity 80. So let's just press play, and we'll see. Now it's costing us money. Transportation departments. Seaports. It's costing us a hundred. We could reduce that amount if we wanted. But I think we're going to very quickly use up. Yeah, see, it's grown already. It's going to get bigger. Growth stage two. I think there's five growth stages for this seaport. Yeah, it's grown again. And we're going to be, I think we're going to be quickly at max capacity again. Wow. There we go. We got a bigger container ship. We don't have any other connections, so I think the seaport will probably grow to its kind of maximum extent very quickly. Yeah, let's take a look. Looks like it's a very busy little seaport. Oh yeah, we are totally at max capacity. So yeah, uh, I think that's something uh, that's something that I will consider next episode uh, is expanding our seaport and. Looks like we've used up, yeah, we've used up all our industrial demand. So maybe expanding the seaports, uh, expanding industry, and looking at some new kinds of, uh, of connections to other cities. Uh, so I think that's good for this episode. We've got uh, we've got these three kind of satellite towns feeding ferry traffic into this industrial port city, and the city has grown a bit. We've ex expanded into this kind of manufacturing area, and I think. Uh, we're up to 43,000. So I think uh, next episode that uh, we're gonna kind of deal with some more of these uh, more more of these problems and and keep expanding and I, I uh, and build out build out our networks, our transportation networks. Um, so thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.